We just had the Quizmaster on. We had Steve <laughs> Dryden on in the last hour because uh, Steve came on to explain the Maple Leaf all-time list. And this is the beauty of these lists. They're all worthy of debate, and they're all great players and great teams. And we did it three times last week, and we knew the, the Maple Leaf one would lead to debate in our market. And people are going to chime in all over the place. And as we've established as well, uh, like 5% of people actually read the criteria. So yeah, everyone's right. yelling and screaming without actually knowing the way this, this list worked out. But I think two guys that you can speak to, Ray, um, because you would have played against both, what would be Sundin and Gilmore. And I would ask you, if you were if you were lined up against them one night, you know, you're playing at the Gardens, let's say, and your coach goes to you and goes, you got Gilmore tonight or you got Sundin tonight, in their primes in Toronto, which one would be more concerning for you? Which, which matchup would you be more nervous about? Uh, well, Gilmore would be way harder to play against because he was, you know, just a – he was a fiend, right? Like he was, he was like relentless and chippy and dirty and like he was impossible to get away from. So that would be a harder night. Sundin would just beat you. Yeah. Because he, he was better. Yeah. He got that puck behind the net, man, and he tried to wrap it around. You're not getting it from him. You can't get it. It's like you just can't. No. And so like, like for me personally, the, the bigger guys, like, you know, Matt's was so bloody big and like Mario and those guys, I could be in the right spot. They move the puck to their forehand. I'm six feet from the puck. Like I can't get it. Mm-hmm. Right. But Gilmore would just like, he would be a pest and he was so tricky and slick when it got into tight spaces. Right. Like that would be really hard to, to deal with on a, on a given night, like on a night that like Dougie also had the ability, I think on a, in a big in a big game like you know in a playoff game or a important game he would just he would become more he was showing he up have, you knew it yeah it was there Mats was just so good that like even on a night when he didn't have it he was just he was good he was just really good right and so but it's for this purpose here like you, you can't leave Sundin off this team as I'm looking at it, he's the all-time leading scorer, right? Yeah, well, and that's and I would I would argue um, this is where it gets complicated because I can't speak to Silaps and I can't you know sure. I, I, You're right. how am Impossible. I supposed to know? But yeah. I would go Gilmore over Sundin if it came down to the two of them because Gilmore's two years uh, in '92, '93, and '93, '94 uh, are unparalleled in team history, and yeah. he was so far and away their best player, and it's so far and away the best two years this team's ever had. He had 1.48 points per game in the playoffs. To your point, Ray, what he w- how he would elevate. Like, he, he threw that team on his shoulders and said, let's go on back-to-back runs and back-to-back years. And there were other guys that contributed. Clark was great. You know, they, they Burns factored in with his coaching style. But Gilmore was so good. Um, he doesn't have the longevity that Sundin does. Sundin's racked up all the points. Both great players. But if I'm picking one... I'm going Gilmore, and, and partially that is biased. I mean, I, he's my favorite Leaf of all time, and he brings the heart and soul element to it, which is an intangible, and it's very difficult to actually quantify. In fact, it's impossible. But speaking to it in the way you just define him, chippy, and he's right in your face, and he's in the middle of it. I just love them. I love them as a player. Right. And, but then you look at where it's impossible. Like with a, It's much easier with a team that historically hasn't, had a, a long run of great players like you can easily or their great players were so far the great players right but the Leafs history is so long it's so complicated like I, again I, I don't know Sil Apps I can just see what he did how do you how would you leave Dave Keon off that team no he's on it All right yeah right Gotta and be. so all of a sudden you get to a point where you're like ah, there's all no geez Daryl Sittler's not there like there's only four like four spots in the middle of the ice. And I guess the, as I think of it, the only other place I could put a current player would have been Morgan Riley, maybe. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think I would say, like, Marner can't be there. No. In my not in mind. front of the other guys, not in front of No, that's what I mean. you got to look at yeah. who's there. And then for people to complain and say, well, the criteria is stupid. Yeah, but that's the criteria. If you don't like it, then have your own poll and make your own criteria. For right. this poll, for our discussions, 
You needed the current guy. You needed 225 games. Like, there's certain teams that where you go, man, that guy's a really good player. Oh, he didn't play 225 games there. So he's not even eligible. Right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's, so, that's the truth. I mean, that's what makes it a conversation, a debate. That, that's what's going to omit certain players, you know, without question. And Like, look at those. You know, Jamie and I talked a little bit today because I called him about that uh, the story with James Duffy there with the animation. I thought was just awesome. Noodles told that story of Hexy getting a chicken dumped on his lap, right? Yeah. And then he went crazy. I just called him because <laughs> I thought that thing was hilarious. But we were talking, and he mentioned about you know Montreal's are like all time greats, impossible to leave off. Right. And so that was the example I was using. Is that man? Sometimes the players are just so great, like. They have to be there. Yeah. Like Larry Robinson was their shutdown D for crying out loud. Yeah, and Serge Sabard, like they're they're so far ahead that you have to have them. And yet that that brought up a, the point in Montreal where Carey Price was the goalie ahead of Patrick Walk because you needed a current guy. Right. Like I think well, this stuff is awesome. I don't I don't know how the hell you sort it from the 40s to the 50s to the 60s and and today. Like I don't know how you determine that. Like, well, you mentioned the Habs, right? What? One thing that sticks out between the Habs and the Leafs is no, no defenseman from the past like twenty five years. Yeah. Right. Like now it speaks to their great history prior to it with all those cup wins. Right. And it's not. It's not a coincidence that the Habs haven't won since ninety three, and the Leafs haven't won, haven't been to a cup final since ninety three, since sixty seven. Uh, but you know, Subban, I guess you know, could have made a case. Some I saw in Montreal preaching for Andre Markov. I don't see it. No. Uh, you know, in Toronto, Cavalier and McCabe could be in that running. I but. think, Brian, if, uh, there's something about it that, that I might think that if Brian Burrard had stayed healthy, that he might have – like, he was an unbelievable talent. I don't know how long he was going to stay here. or But if that guy stayed healthy and he didn't have that injury, he, he might have been a guy that could have slid on that list because he was an unreal talent. Mm-hmm. Well, it's like anything, though. You, you can go back and, and, you know, Ray, you, you played with guys. Oh, you played with guys like – you know, it depends on I, – I thought it was really cool that Lanny McDonald made Toronto and Calgary's list. Yeah. Like, could you imagine, cool. if, imagine if Eric Lindros was healthy when he got to Toronto? Like, know. you know what I mean? Right. Like, that, that, like what, could it, what damage could have Big E done if that was a healthy Eric Lindros in, the, you know, in shape and, and, and really engaged and, and not with concussion issues and that? Like, what, where would he be? Where that would, would he be a, fit on that That would list? be a cool list, though, to put together for any of these original six teams who have had so many guys, you know, join them over the years when they right. weren't in their prime or were there Brian for a Leach. short stint. Exactly. Like Francis was here. Leach was here. Um, yeah. You know, you think Bobby Orr would be in Chicago's all-time team, you know, right. as Bobby Orr, but not the Bobby Orr of Chicago, right. um, if you know what I'm saying. Like if you could – put together a separate list of just the greatest players of all time in their prime who happened to play for your team. Like yeah. Pronger would be in Edmonton's. He'd be their number one defenseman yeah. all time. The cup Maybe. of coffee Pronger list. The cup Pronger of Pronger coffee list. Four teams. Pronger would be on like a bunch of teams. Niedermeyer yeah, would like, be on multiple teams. Lindros yeah. would be on multiple teams. Yager would be on like 10. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's you know? true. Bure. You know, I would be on multiple. There's a it, bunch it, of guys. It's it's. I was just thinking about that because everyone's complaining about the center ice position. I get that the criteria. I I love this exercise. Like I I, I think it's fantastic. It's great for for us to to sit and debate it. I just have a tougher time, and I said it earlier, when you have storied franchises like Montreal, like Toronto, that have such a long history, and I'm not schooled enough in it. I just don't know enough from guys from the 20s and 30s that, that you know, still apps. Yes, obviously, Brian, you said it's, he's a generational guy that was handed well, down. Well, people are familiar with the name. And, and, right. and people are familiar with Teeter Kennedy and stuff, but it's not, right. you know, you can't expect exactly people that right. aren't anywhere close to that generation to connect to it. 